Let's just jump right in with 20 signs of covert narcissism. Number one, lack of empathy. It's not going to look the same as it does with a more overt narcissist. A covert narcissist's lack of empathy sometimes looks like empathy. It can be hard to spot. It can be one of the hardest things to spot. Because you see, a narcissist will have cognitive empathy. They understand that other people are going through something. There is an awareness of it. They just don't do anything with that awareness because they don't have the rest of what it takes for empathy to be acted on and actually taken in and internalized and felt by them the way the other person might be feeling or, or, or need to be heard, right? So they may do things that are acts of kindness. They may do things that are heroic. They may do things that appear like someone with empathy would do because they do have that awareness of what the other person's going through, right? But they're doing that thing in order to gain for themselves. They're doing anything they do that shows and looks like empathy. If you watch it, it's always self-referred back, selfish kind of, um, for instance, if they do something and they save a life or they do something heroic, they will tell the story over and over, either in a humble way or in a very boastful way. But sometimes in this very humble, oh, oh, oh yes, oh, oh, don't, don't look at, you know, like, but really they are getting supply for it. They're, anything they do that they're acting where, where someone with empathy might engage, they're doing it for supply. Number two, passive self-importance, backhanded compliments obvious mimicking of other people's accomplishments. Number three, blame and shame. Blame and shame. There's often a word salad that goes along with this when they just start talking about everything under the sun unrelated to what's actually the topic at hand in order to throw you off the track and then shift the blame right at the last minute there and start pointing it back at you and all of a sudden you're the one at fault you're the one wrong they become the victim they have blamed you shamed you and now they're the one who is getting apologized to number four disregard covert narcissist like any other narcissist will disregard the way they might disregard is acting like they didn't hear you, talking through you, making jokes that are inappropriate at the time so that what you're saying or doing or feeling isn't heard or represented correctly. Number five, emotional neglect. They know your needs, but they refuse to give them. They know what you need in a relationship or what you need in the moment as far as like just basic relationship, things that help others feel good and safe, and they refuse to give them. Number six, they can be smug and quiet at the same time. So they can have this reserved quietness or smugness about them, especially in situations where a more overt narcissist might be boastful. Number seven, self-absorption. Everything is about them. Oh my gosh, everything is about them, even when it's not actually about them. And they spin it in such a way that it starts out about you or it starts out about someone else and then all of a sudden it's about them so again spinning it to play the victim or to play the one that this has anything to do with right everything's about them in fact this video is about them number eight they're passive aggressive they're often so a lot of people will say i don't know that, that my partner or my ex or whatever was a narcissist because they never yelled at me they never called me names. They never really even criticized me, but I always felt put down. And I always felt like I was stupider than them or that I wasn't very smart or I always felt like they judged me or always, it's because when someone treats you passive aggressively, when they brush you off in subtle ways, when they don't directly confront you, but they give little jabs from the side, it can make you feel like that. Number nine, they're highly sensitive. They don't like criticism. They don't like critique. They don't like anything that points a finger back at them and they overreact to it and have tantrums really when things are pointed out. They have a false humility. Number 10, false humility, false humbleness, almost to the point of victimhood. Number 11, they have immature responses, easily offended, and they take no accountability within that. So they they give up the accountability they refuse to take it through this defensiveness through this 
immature response that makes it so how could they be blamed you picture like um it's everybody else's fault or the response is so outrageously immature that the accountability is completely lost in in the conversation number 12 they minimize others needs and pain because they don't have any empathy not really they have cognitive awareness but they do not have any care for others they will minimize your pain because it's a bother for them to have to deal with it number 13 they have lopsided attention needs their need for attention is really high a covert narcissist isn't going to look the same as an overt narcissist an overt narcissist charms you and grabs your attention right a covert narcissist does not do that they often will subtly hint for attention or they will pull your attention or they will act childish when they don't get their way if it's your birthday or if it's something important to you they'll make it awful to get the attention these kind of things covert narcissists are great at number 15 there's a silent rage they don't often covert narcissists they can don't get me wrong some of them can rage out loud with enthusiasm right a lot of them though will have a silent rage which comes in the form of like a seething or a silent treatment or a dismissal that's you know under your breath and like that kind of thing where you just feel their rage but they're not actually expressing large amounts of rage externally number 16 they gaslight well yeah narcissistic tactic number one probably is the gaslighting the way a covert will gaslight is more subtle everything about that what they do is hidden everything about what they do is not going to be obvious it's going to be this hidden approach that gets them either gets them supply or lets them get away with something number 17 they're highly wrapped up in their own self interest and devalue everything else number 18 they have an extreme need for praise oh my i heard a covert narcissist when asked of the covert narcissist what is it that you need from me the reply was praise adoration respect worship okay number 19 envy they envy others successes they envy others lives they envy others everything but most importantly they envy your goodness kindness compassion drive light beauty they envy you and when they're envying they need to prove you wrong they need to break you down and they need to knock you off any pedestal they put you on to begin with to make you know that you're less than them in their eyes and number 20 they help others for recognition we touched on that in the beginning they help others so that they get attention that's the only reason they're doing it really and it becomes obvious when you start to look at the patterns of how they help so covert narcissism can be one of the trickier things. It can be really isolating as a survivor of this because you doubt yourself. You will question everything. You have tried everything to see what the heck is going on in this relationship and what is wrong with that person or is it me or is it them or is it me, right? You've gone back and forth a lot if you are researching covert narcissism. It's one of those things that if you need the validation reach out for some help please because like i'm not going to tell you and hopefully anyone that is speaking to you isn't going to tell you oh yeah that person's toxic for no reason right but listening to the story and hearing the patterns and relating back and forth what the gaslighting feels like what this what is actually going on can sometimes give people such an extraordinary amount of validation that it can help them find resolve in themselves to heal themselves whether they stay with that person or leave that person right so if you need help please reach out there's information in the description of every video on how to do that if you can't do that and don't want to do that then ask questions here and I will do my best to answer them or make other videos that go along with this one. So with that said, I'm Lise Colucci. I'm one of the life coaches at Queen Being and don't forget to hit subscribe here and I will see you guys next time. Take care.